how good is the RTX 2080 here in 2024? We're going to talk about the specs of everything, benchmarking in some games, and at the end of the video, we'll talk about the current pricing on these graphics cards and whether or not it is a good deal or not, but ultimately, I'm going to leave that up to you guys. It was released in September of 2018, so we're coming up on five and a half years since this GPU was released. How does it fare in some of the most popular games here at the beginning of 2024? Well, we're going to find out. Now, this graphics card's only got eight gigs of GDDR6 memory, and you know, all the crazy people out there. Sorry if you're offended. I, I, I didn't really mean to, you know, call you crazy, but all those little Timmies out there think that eight gigs of VRAM is just absolutely crazy and it's never going to work because you need more. <laughs> But I don't think you need that much more here in 2024. Most people think this graphics card is for 1080p, and that is probably where it is going to shine the most in the games that we tested. But we did test it also at 1440p just to, you know, stretch its legs a little bit, let it fly, you know, let it believe that it can be a 1440p graphics card. Now let's go over the parts for our test bench that we're going to use for the entire year of 2024. That is our i5-12600K processor from Intel. It's a pretty solid processor here at the beginning of 2024, but you know how fast they spit these things out, you know? So we're probably going to have a middle of the road processor by the end, but it will still get the job done. It'll show you really good performance based off, you know, what your system is. So of course it can vary depending on what CPU you use, but I want to show you a pretty good best case scenario for most of the people out there that are watching this video for the RTX 2080. We got a Z690 motherboard. We're not doing any overclocking. Everything will be run at stock, except for the RAM, of course. We did enable XMP, so we're running 32 gigs of RAM at 5600 megahertz in this beautiful P3 case that I did not put the glass on because I'm changing graphics cards constantly. This is the perfect case for me to mount on the wall and get it out of my way. Speaking of getting things out of the way, we got the test bench parts out of the way. Everybody wants to know those, but let's give you what you really came here for, and that's the benchmarks. First up in Warzone, on the basic preset settings, we went with 1440p. Now we decided to go with no FSR whatsoever in these benchmark runs to give you the raw performance of this graphics card. Except for when we get to Cyberpunk because there was an exception there and I'll tell you about that when we get there. But at 1440p, on the basic preset settings, we turned FSR, DLSS, we turned all that mess off just so we could get raw performance. And we got around like 100 FPS with some jumps up into like the 120s. Occasionally it might drop a little below 100, but staying at 100 at 1440p with this card, I thought was pretty awesome. Awesome. But where this card shines is 1080p, so of course we're going to show you those numbers too. And that was around 130 to 150 FPS, so you got that 144 steady FPS in Warzone, which is pretty good, if I do say so myself. But you let me know what you think. Next up, we played Halo Infinite. It's actually gotten a little bit better. You should check it out if you were a Halo fan back in the day. At 1440p, we actually got on the low settings, 1440p low settings, we got 115 to 130 FPS. On Halo Infinite, if you've ever played it on a PC, you know know how good that is. Then we decided to lower the render scale to 75%. This gives us a 1080p experience because 75% of 1440p is 1080p. And at 1080p, we still stayed with the low settings just so you could see how much of a jump it was. You could definitely up these if you wanted your game to look a little bit better. But at low settings at 1080p, we got around 165 to 180 FPS. If you like gaming PCs or benchmarks or want to know more about your FPS, how to get it, or what you're going to get when you get your PC, press that like and subscribe button because we do it every week over here at Matt Miller PCs. Now, before we get to the really demanding games, I did want to throw in a couple of, you know, like esports slash lower AAA titles because some people are just wanting to play those games and they want a decent graphics card but they don't want to spend an arm and a leg. So I got to show you. In Apex Legends, we played like Team Deathmatch or Gun Run, so you might have a little bit less in the Battle Royale. First, we tried it at 1440p on high to max settings just to see how much fun and how good it would look and we got around like 140 to 160 FPS, which is pretty awesome and pretty playable. But at 1440p on pretty much low settings, we did get around 200 FPS in Apex. Again, Apex is not super demanding. It can't run on a potato like some of the games can, but it is actually a pretty good number here. Of course, if you want to get closer to that solid 240, 250-ish FPS, you can go to 1080p, low settings, and you'll get just that with Apex Legends. So if you got one of those beastly 240 hertz monitors and you're wanting to play some Apex Legends and grind it out, you can get close to that. But if you're wanting to play Battle Royale, that might be a little different, might be a little lower, but I could, I would say that you're definitely going to get around 180, but I'm just, you know, not wasting my time playing the Battle Royale. Speaking of Battle Royales, everyone's favorite Battle Royale, good old Fortnite, we played it on 
DX12. Now you could definitely get more FPS if you played on performance mode, but those numbers are going to drastically change based off the CPU that you put in your system. So we run everything on DX12 just to show you one, Fortnite is not a CPU based game completely. Like you do need a good CPU, but you also need a graphics card. Speaking of that, that's foreshadowing for the channel to come. But at 1440p on DX12, we did everything on low except for the view distance. We put that on epic. So to give you kind of a competitive settings type deal, we got around 180 FPS. And we got a slight bump in that when we went to DX12 on 1080p and it bumped us up to around the 200 to 220 mark on the FPS counter. So it's not that solid 240 in Fortnite, but depending on your CPU, you put that bad boy on performance mode, you're definitely getting 240. Now to stress this graphics card out a little bit farther, we are going to play, you know, the new Crisis. I mean, Starfield. I know I've used that joke a lot, but you know, just like it. At 1440p, we went on the lowest settings possible and we got 55, 60 FPS. So it is playable. Is it worth it? Uh, you can tell me down here in the comments, you know? But 1080p, low settings, we got 80 to 90 FPS. So you, you be the judge. Is low 1440p worth it or can you go a little bit higher on the settings at 1080p and get that 60 FPS and be happy with it? You be the judge. And the last thing is Cyberpunk 2077. Now, Cyberpunk has, you know, some problems with the built-in benchmark sometimes. I should probably just start the game and, you know, play it for real, but I just, just don't have the time, man. I just, I'm a dad now. So what we did was we ran the built-in benchmark. We tried to turn off FSR, but for some reason it would automatically cut it back on. And at high settings at 1440p with FSR, I know it's an NVIDIA graphics card. I could have turned on DLSS, but you know, it automatically turned on FSR. So that, 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 that's, just, that's the number I got, man. That's the number I got. And it's 83 FPS. And at 1080p, for some reason, at 1080p on the high settings, we did actually get it to turn off FSR, DLSS, and all that jazz. We got 91 FPS. So that's why they're so close in number. So I would bet that you could probably get pretty close to 60 at 1440p on Cyberpunk low setting. Now, before we talk about the price, prices of this graphics card, I need something from you guys. We're starting a new year here on the channel and the last year was absolutely fantastic. You guys were awesome. We're going to be starting a series called Flipping PCs Until I Buy My Wife a Pool. Now we've been flipping PCs for a while now and we've made some decent money and we've been able to upgrade the room as you can see behind us. Although this light fell down over here, we want to do something nice for her. So we're going to spend this entire year flipping PCs and hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have enough to buy her a pool. If you would like this series and you think it would be fun to follow along, let let me know what your thoughts about it down in the comment and how do you want it to be vlog style just see the pcs do you want me to try to film the interactions with the people i really need you to tell me your input we're still going to be having great pc builds we're still going to be testing graphics cards like this video none of that's going to change i just want to know if you know we can add the vlog style content and add the experience and help you guys flip pcs wherever you are let me know what you think about that now let's talk about the process of these graphics cards so is the RTX 2080 really worth it? So if you check the current used eBay prices and you sort by the ones that have actually sold recently and you go through those listings and you look at the actual RTX 2080 and not the RTX 2080 Super or the RTX 2080 Ti, then you're looking at somewhere at the lowest ballpoint of $180. But I only found two or three that have been sold like that. Most of them are around 200 to 220. So is it worth it? You let me know down here but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You probably want to go watch this video. 